lift your hand and lift your voice and glorify God this morning. Thank him from the depth of your heart for these awesome testimonies. They are the doings of the Lord and therefore they are marvelous in our eyes. Give him the praise, give him the glory, give him the honor and the adoration that is due unto his name this morning. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Remember, appreciation to God is application for more. As you are thanking him for what he has done, you are committing him to what he would do. Lift your voice and give thanks unto him this morning. Celebrate him is worthy of all the praise and worthy of all the glory. Appreciate him. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all praise. Thank him also for the answers to your prayers. Knowing that you have not only prayed, but he has heard. And not only has he heard, but he has answered. Give him the glory due unto his name. Celebrate him and give him thanks. Father, we give you the praise and the glory. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all praise and of all glory. We celebrate you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Now begin to ask him to speak to you this morning. All the people gathered early in the morning for to hear him. I've come today to hear from you, Lord. Speak directly to me. Speak directly to me. Lift your voice and ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, I've come for a word from you. I'm here, Lord, to hear from you. Speak directly to me today. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for the privilege and the blessing of being in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the answers you have given to our prayers. And thank you for the awesome testimonies of your hand that work in our midst. Lord, our eyes are upon you this morning. Speak to us again. By your word, let every one of us be changed and transformed. We give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. We have been looking at this line of exhortations all through this week entitled Obedience Gateway to Change of Levels. According to scripture, every child of God is ordained to experience change of levels. Proverbs 4 verse 18, the path of the just is like a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. But the change of level package of the redeemed is not automatic. It is predicated on obedience. In the book of De Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all that I command you this day, he said the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. So every change of level is predicated on obedience. That's why Mary the mother of Jesus said in John chapter 2 verse 5, whatsoever it tells you to do do it it is in obeying god that you experience supernatural change of levels until obedience is actually executed change of levels cannot be experienced so our change of levels is always at the mercy of our obedience don't forget that god's ability is never restrained no matter what your condition may be in Ephesians 3.20, it said, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. So there's always a next level with God. No matter what your present experience may be, there is always a next level with God. But that next level can only be experienced on the platform of obedience. So all through this week, we have been looking at various examples of individuals that experience change of levels on the basis of their obedience. And today we are going to be looking at the example of Daniel, a notable servant of God. Daniel, a notable servant of God. I want us to be reminded that when we talk about obedience, obedience actually is the trademark of servants. The Bible makes very clear, it says, Whomsoever you yield your members to obey, he said, his servants ye are. So a servant of God is simply one who yields themselves to obeying the instructions and the directions of God. And we find that becoming the experience and the lifestyle of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 and verse 9, we are told concerning Daniel that Daniel proposed in his heart 
that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. He proposed in his heart. Defiling himself was going to be violating a commandment of God. Because the Bible makes clear that sin is the transgression of the law. So there was a law from God that if you are going to walk with him, you cannot compromise with anything that has been offered to, you know, offered as sacrifices to idols. And that was what the king was continuously eating. And everyone who was to be part of the princes were expected to partake of the same. But Daniel refused to defile himself with the you know, meat that came from the king's table. He decided that obeying God was more important than comfort. And the Bible tells us in verse 9 that God brought him into favor and into tender you know, love with the prince of the eunuchs, the one who was in charge of them. He determined in his heart and God responded with his favor. We began to see the hand of God upon Daniel. Verse 17, we are told there concerning Daniel, that concerning these individuals, Daniel and all of his friends, he said God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in visions and dreams. And verse 20 con tells us concerning them that they were found to be ten times better than all of their colleagues. By taking a step, to stand with God, God changed their levels. That was the experience of Daniel and his friends. In fact, we are made to see in scriptures, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 5 down to verse 10, that Daniel would rather die than disobey God's commandment. A commandment was brought forth. And what was that commandment? Very simple. He said, if, any, if we are going to get anything against Daniel, it has to be something that will make him violate his God. There is no occasion we can find except something against his God. So a commandment came forth that no one was to pray to any other God except to the king. And Daniel, the Bible says, he went, opened his windows as a full time and went praying to the God of his fathers every single day, three times a day. As far as Daniel was concerned, it was better to die than to disobey God. It was better to die than to disobey God. And what happened to Daniel? We see Daniel scaling strange heights. The things that could not be imagined began to happen on the behalf of Daniel. Let's look at a few of them quickly from the scriptures. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 46, we are told there that after Daniel had interpreted the dream of the king Nebuchadnezzar, he said that the king fell upon his face and did what? And worshipped Daniel. And commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet odors unto him. He fell on his face and worshipped Daniel. First of all, you know that it is almost an abomination for a king to lie down, to prostrate. True or false? You don't ever see that happen. But the Bible did not say he just prostrated. He said he began to worship Meaning that as far as the king was concerned, Daniel was not a human being. He was actually a god in the eye of the king. And to confirm it, the king said, okay, now let them begin to offer oblation and burn incense to Daniel. A man that was walking on two feet like the king became a deity before the eye of the king. Divinity was manifesting in humanity. Why? Because he had decided to take a stand with God. He decided to take a stand with God. When they came against him in Daniel chapter 6, the Bible tells us from verse 20 down to verse 28, how that Daniel was cast into the den of the lions. When the king came in the morning, he cried out with a lamentable voice, Daniel, servant of the Most High God, is there a God who you serve continually able to save you? A lamentable voice means he came there with the expectation to see the conclusion of Daniel. He didn't expect to hear a voice from the den. But suddenly a voice cried out. He said, my God has sent an angel before me and he has shut the mouth of the lion that they were not able to harm me. We know the story, but particularly from verse 26 to 28, something happened. The Bible tells us there, it says, I make a decree, that's the king speaking now, that in every dominion of my kingdom, he said, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Why? For he is the living God. 
and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall be that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion even unto the end by daniel stand with god the entire babylon turned to god one time you know what it means for an entire nation and babylon as at that time was a conglomerate of nations it was it was nations put together but here the bible says it said everywhere every dominion every nation let it be that everyone will stand and fear before god and the bible tells us concerning daniel how that daniel prospered in verse 28 we are told he said he prospered daniel 6 and verse 28 he said daniel prospered in the reign of darius and in the reign of cyrus the persian when you look at it four different kings he met nebuchadnezzar met his son met darius met cyrus and all of them he reigned in and prospered in every one of their times he was a man that could not be moved a man that could not be shifted every one of them you see them one taken over from the other and that's not succession plan you know each one of them was taken over by force nebuchadnezzar handed over to his son darius came and took the kingdom by force from nebuchadnezzar's son cyrus came and took it by force from darius but every one of them came met daniel there and left him there he continued to reign a man that could not be deposed by reason of the hand of god upon his life that's what takes place when obedience becomes our lifestyle we position ourselves with god's backing and therefore become unmovable that will become your experience in the name of the lord jesus christ somebody believe they say louder amen what god is saying to us therefore is simple prove me now with your obedience if i will not manifest myself unto you john 14 and verse 21 the bible tells us there it says that he that hath my commandments and keepeth them it is he that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father it says and i will love him and will manifest myself unto him god is always in the habit of manifesting to the obedient he's always in the habit of manifesting to the obedient second chronicles 16 and verse 9 the eye of the lord goes to and fro the earth looking for a man whose heart is perfect towards him to show himself strong so god is not trying to hide himself god is trying to show himself but he's showing himself only in the direction of the obedient so our obedience causes god to show up on our behalf there are many many who cry out lord show up for me lord show up for me very simple obey him and he will show up for you god's manifestation will always follow our obedience that is why you and i must ensure that at every point in time we are committing ourselves to the art of obedience because in doing so we are provoking his manifestation on our behalf i see god manifesting on your behalf in the name of the lord jesus christ and there's no way that god shows up that mountains don't bow down everywhere god shows up oppositions bow down oh that thou wouldest rend the heavens and come down he said that the mountains may flow at thy presence as the waters boil in the melting pot he says so let thy enemies perish before thee when a man has god's backing and god's manifestation enemies are not a discussion they simply melt away they flee away they are driven like smoke before the wind that's what occurs when god's presence manifests on your behalf that's going to be your experience from now in the name of the lord jesus christ i said that will be your experience from now in the name of the lord jesus christ so when god gives commandments obey him and watch him show up on your behalf obey him and watch him show up on your behalf obey him and watch him show up on your behalf we saw the testimonies we heard today those were simply testimonies of obedience somebody said they had lost everything owing so much money to the point that everything within the house living room was empty you began to hear echo echo means there is nothing to disrupt the movement of sound the place was an empty room but yet they continued to engage and god turned their story around god will turn your story around in the name of the lord jesus Will you rise on your feet to me this morning? Receive grace from God. Lord, I receive grace for obedience. I receive grace for obedience. I receive grace for obedience. Lift your voice and take that grace this morning.
take that grace this morning. Lord, I receive grace for obedience, to obey you, to obey your instruction, to obey your direction. Lord, I receive that grace today. I receive that grace today to live a life of obedience. I receive that grace today. In the name of Jesus, I take grace this morning. Grace for obedience. Grace for obedience. Grace for obedience. I receive it now. I receive it now. I receive it now. I receive it now. In the name of Jesus, I receive it now. In the name of Jesus, I take grace from you, Lord, to obey your word, to heed your commandment in the name of Jesus. Now, take grace, particularly in this prophetic season, to obey the instruction of engaging profitably, ensuring that your own 10, your minimum 10, I established. Lord, I receive that grace. Take that grace from God right now. Take that grace from God right now. Take that grace from God right now. Simple commandment requires simple obedience, but requires grace from heaven. Lord, I receive grace to deliver my own minimum 10. My own minimum 10. I take that grace today. I take that grace today. In the name of Jesus, let it be made available to me. Let it be made available to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand, lift your voice, and give glory to God this morning. I appreciate him from the depth of your heart. Father, thank you. And blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. The grace you have asked for will begin to manifest in your life from today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And as you obey God, it will begin manifesting on your behalf. The things that you cannot handle for yourself, God will take over on your behalf. Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. That shall be your experience in Jesus' precious name. Don't forget we have the mandate from God in this season. Simple instruction requiring simple obedience. And you have called on God for grace. So all that you need to do is engage that grace. Engage that grace. Engage that grace. God said minimum 10. Minimum 10. That's too small. Too cheap. All you need to do is take a decision in your heart and activate the grace by action. And then begin to see God work on your behalf. No one here will fall short. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have the tracks and flyers. One more time, stretch your hand towards them and decree the breath of the Holy Ghost upon them. They are going out today as instruments of harvest. Sickles, sharp sickles. Every one of them will reach out to somebody. Every one of these materials will capture the attention of everyone they come across. The words will strike their hearts, convicting them, drawing them, converting them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name. These are sent out today with the breath of the Holy Ghost. Every one of them returns with a bountiful harvest. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Speak to the day right now and make your declaration concerning this day. What you decree God will deliver. So speak to it right now. Speak to it right now. This day is blessed. A loaded day. A day of testimonies. A day of progress. A day of turnaround. This day, favor answers. This day, favor answers. This day, favor answers. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, this day is declared blessed. All through this day, the favor of God answers on your behalf. Every door you approach opens to you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a day of good news. No evil tidings come your way today. In your going out, you go in peace. In your coming in, you return in peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. It's my year of breaking limits. What eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations. Amen and amen. You are blessed. There are flowers and tracks available. You pick up what you require as you go and be blessed.